So this morning we went to see a school friend of mum's uh, at Burniston. There were two Hercules uh, plane flyovers as they are being retired, I do believe. So that was great to hear and to see, but alas, I didn't have my camera to film that for us to enjoy. 
but uh, yeah, they were over at RAF Li Ming uh, doing, doing a flyover of their retirement flight. So that's how we started today. And then we went off to Cyan Hill Hall. This is one of the last preeminent country houses that was built in Yorkshire prior to the Great War. This house stands on five acres of gardens and is delightfully furnished. The house is of Neo-Georgian style and was designed in 1912 by architect Walter H. Briarley of York. The gardens were largely neglected up until 1999 when the current owner, Michael Malaby, uh, spent a vast quantity of time transforming his fields, his quote, not mine, into a beautifully landscaped garden with parterre, long walk, herbaceous borders, and a lower walk overlooking the river Whisk, and uh, also includes a kitchen garden and a centenary rose garden. And then as a very last minute decision, we uh, went over to Newburgh Priory, so I will chat with you in a moment when we get to Newburgh.
So our very last minute decision to go to Nobra Priory um, was a very good decision, I think, uh, and you will find out why in a moment. Uh, this is a Tudor building near Cox World. Yep. And was originally the house of Augustinian canons and was founded in 1145 and became a family home following the dissolution of the Priory in 1538. The present house was built in the late 16th century, remodeled by the fourth Viscount Falkenberg from 1725 to 1745 and further restored in the 1960s after um, it was requisitioned as a school. The house was once the home of the Bellasis family and the seat of the Earls of Auchenberg until the death of Lady Charlotte Bellaye -E, -E in 1825 when it then passed to the Womble family. Uh, Womble, well, sorry, passed to the Wombwell family. Sir George Wombwell? W O M B W E L L, the third baronet. Roger de Mowbray founded the House of Augustinian Canons in 1142, uh, originally in Bridlington. Bridlington was a temporary settlement, and they moved in 1145 to Newbro when William the Conqueror granted it to Robert. Little else is really known about it until 1538 when Henry VIII dissolved the monasteries, and Margaret Tudor could have stayed there possibly in 1503 as a guest during her progress to meet her husband James IV of Scotland. Anthony de Bellasis, royal chaplain, purchased the priory in 1539 from Henry VIII for £1,062 with his brother Richard. His nephew William converted Newburgh into a private residence and was appointed the Sheriff of Yorkshire. His eldest son was MP for Thirsk several times and the family in 1627 was given the title of Baron and Viscount in 1643. The Viscount's grandson Thomas married Oliver Cromwell's daughter Mary and was created Earl Falkenberg in 1689. Oliver Cromwell is important, remember that. The property then went through a few generations, leading on to Henry Bellasys, the second Earl of Falkenberg, who, when he died in 1802, the earldom became extinct because he had no male heirs and was left to Lady Charlotte. Her husband, Thomas Wynne, took the surname, took her surname, and when she died in 1825, again, there was no male heir. The estate passed to George Wombwell, 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 third baronet, and is still lived in it by, is still lived in by the family, um, Stephen and his wife Alice and their children. The house is also believed to be cursed, as in one room they were told that if they ever finished it, um, the future generations would die, and it was, they began redecorating it after a fire a few centuries ago, and all the children of that generation died, so it was left untouched. The other somewhat curse is that buried at the top of a set of stairs is the resting place for Oliver Cromwell's body, minus his head. The tomb is not to be disturbed and was brought there by his daughter Mary when he died. Interesting little fact, Queen Mary, the Queen Mother, tried to get the body removed, but the Archbishop of Canterbury told her to leave it where it was. So, now you know. The interiors have a very interesting mix of um, monastery, Jacobean, Georgian, and Victorian decoration, and it's all mixed in together in the various rooms. All right, there's that. Have a good night.